Thanks everyone for taking the time to be here. Um, listen, the Ocean 7 is a beautiful aspirational challenge in our sport. Uh, it was originally conceived by Stephen Munitones, and since then it's taken on a life of its own, both inside and outside the swimming community. Uh, Wowza does not own the Ocean 7 or claim any rights to it. It is the intellectual property of Stephen, and Wowza has no intention of governing or regulating it. While issues in Sugaru bring to light some of the challenges in other crossings, such as the supply and demand imbalances and the rare occurrence of an unethical pilot, today I want to focus solely on how we might improve the situation in Sugaru. We are deeply disturbed by the experience swimmers are having this summer and want to do what we can to make sure more swimmers don't have a similarly devastating experience. We also believe that keeping these issues behind closed doors will not lead to a constructive resolution. The best thing we can do is use our platform to present as many of the facts as possible and facilitate an open discussion, which is why I look forward to hearing from each of you on how we, as members of both the WAZA Advisory Board, but also members of a global open water swimming community, might be able to influence change to create a better experience for swimmers. First, a quick update and refresher on the facts we have so far. At one point, the Sugaru Strait had two local governing bodies the TCSA aff affiliated with Ocean Navi and the TSSA affiliated with Haruyuki Ishii. We now know the TCSA no longer exists. We all know that all of the solo attempts managed by Ocean Navi this year have failed. A point to keep in mind is that on the very day when Barbara Hernandez was informed by Ocean Navi that her crossing couldn't proceed, Andy Donaldson achieved a successful crossing. He was accompanied by Haruyuki Ishii who came out of retirement specifically to observe and support Donaldson's swim. So what do we know about Ocean Navi? It's a Tokyo-based business run by Masayuki Moriya, which primarily runs large masters and pool open waters uh, in, uh, programs in Tokyo. As part of his business, for six weeks out of the year, he coordinates Sugaru Strait Channel crossings. Moriya outsources the coordination of international swimmers to a travel agent, named Shimasaki Yusuke, who serves as the sole point of contact for swimmers until arrival in Japan. There are a few policies this year that have proven controversial. No night swimming, a 14 hour cutoff, none of which is mentioned in the planning documentation prior to arrival, uh, and a very harsh refund policy. Also, there's the route. There are several routes within the Sugaru Strait and the origins of how this particular route became more common remains unclear. With an active east to west current, most common successful crossings in this route show leaving from Kotamare and ending east of Cape Shirakami, including Andy Donaldson's successful route yesterday with Ishii. However, Ocean Navi seems to be requiring swimmers to end west of Cape Shirakami. And when it looks unlikely that they'll be able to, they are pulling the swims. There's also the issue of the governing body. Researching old websites, Ocean Navi was once affiliated with the Sugaru Channel Swimming Association, but Moria confirmed that organization no longer exists. He also confirmed that Ocean Navi itself is not a governing body or association, and he claims there is no governing body for the Sugaru Strait. These are the facts we've uncovered to date. Ocean Navi is a private business with every right to run their business and price their services as they see fit. But what is unique compared to other prominent channel crossings in our sport is, is that we're dealing with a business with no ties to an open water or a marathon swimming organization to serve as an advocate for the swimming community. This, is, this business is currently operating as a near monopoly with a zero out of 13 success rate on solo swims this season. They've made a series of previously undisclosed policy decisions that seem to make it more difficult to successfully cross. And they currently have in place financial incentive, incentives which rewards not starting a swim or stopping early. So this one business is playing a gatekeeper role in someone achieving their dream of completing the Ocean 7 or not. I personally would like to see the Ocean 7 preserved, and I think it's worth trying to figure out how, as a group and representative of the community, we can improve the situation in Sugaru. But it's a complex issue without an easy easy fix or solution. Fortunately, we've assembled a wealth of experience, a wealth of experienced members in this advisory board to make thoughtful recommendations. 
I look forward to each of your personal statements on the topics. What action should Wowza and this advisory board take to improve the experience for future swimmers, given the lack, the lack of a governing body or channel association in, in Sugaru? And number two, if we cannot affect change in Japan, what recommendations do you have for the future of the Ocean 7? Following the meeting, we plan to share the video responses publicly to provide transparency to the wider community. We believe this approach will encourage more thoughtful discussion. I posted the order of personal statements in the Zoom. To save time, when the person in front of you finishes, please unmute and begin your statement. Uh, discussion will follow at the end. Please do your best to keep, the, keep your statement to one minute. We had originally said one to two minutes, but given the turnout today, uh, please try to keep it to one minute. And with that, please, uh, Mark Hamilton. Yeah, hi, Quinn. Hi, everybody. Uh, so very quickly then, number one, what action should most support take given the governing body in Japan lack of it? First question, can we actually do much? Well, I actually think we can. I think we can be positive about this. I think we need to look at some guidelines, best practice. We need to set or certainly examine what a minimum standard should be. Um, I think we need to be in a position to offer support to the situation that is there at the minute, the current situation of the model look at the actual ownership of the of the current model. I think we also need to request a confirmed list of the issues surrounding the swimming progress. So let's look at, we need to get written statements about the Coast Guard statements, um, about no starting before 3 a.m., about being back on harbour, safe harbour by, by sunset. Um, again, we need to look at the, this prohibition to land east of Cape Shirakami. Uh, we know that that route has worked before and the other one doesn't seem to be. Um, and ultimately, I think we need to be dealing with that situation and requesting much better and much improved communications with every swimmer <clears throat> who's, who's going to try and attempt this. So moving very quickly on to number two. If we cannot affect change in Japan, what recommendations are for the future Ocean 7? The first thing I have to say is we have to try. We have to start negotiations and make that in a public forum. The Ocean 7, there is certainly a massive legacy there, and I think there's a huge future there as well. I don't believe that there's an alternative to it. If we lose one of the Ocean 7, I think we lose the Ocean 7. And ultimately, I think that the final thing I would say is there's a huge global interest in Ocean 7 within the swimming community. I don't think it's something that we want to let go very easily. And I think we need to work very hard to try and preserve what has developed into a very, very good challenge. Great. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, uh, thanks. I, I don't know what should, action should be taken at this time. I think the first step has already been taken with the investigation that was done and published to provide more transparency about the current organization. What I've heard from swimmers is that they wouldn't have done the swim with this group if they knew what their rules were in advance. I think our rules to facilitate sharing of experiences and let the buyer beware. It clear that we do not recommend or endorse the current organization. I'd support the creation of a forum where members of the open water community can rate pilots, organizations, and swims overall. I think that would be a tremendous asset for swimmers planning swims. I think any talk of changes to Ocean 7 are premature. It's clear that there's space in the market for competition to the current swim organizer. And if someone can run a successful swim operation, given the constraints of the area in Japan, I think they'd be phenomenally successful. I think we can take some time to see if that can happen. The discussion of changes to an iconic list that for better or worse is part of the fabric of open water swimming, I think is best for a later date. Go ahead, Erica, and let's just flow right through when you see the person yeah, in front I of mean, uh, I think Joe summed up exactly what I was thinking. I mean, I think, you know, we need to continue the investigation, understand, I think the, the Coast Guard comments, understanding what they're doing and like what their policies are um, and, you know, trying to find a pilot that really is invested in helping people to succeed when many people have the cigar straight as their final like list like swim on the ocean sevens to get so you know how can we make this work because i mean by removing it you're you're nullifying those who who have achieved it and so i think we need to do whatever we can to, to find a way to make it work and then address if if we continue to face challenges later so i would agree with joe in that I think there's kind of a swim at your own risk. And that as long as we educate the public 
and say, hey, here's some of the risks involved with swimming with Ocean Navi or any swims for that matter, like Joe said, to have kind of a, a comment or running commentary about boat pilots. You know, I've heard stories about English Channel swims and boat pilots in particular that it just it's buyer beware. And I think as long as we educate the public, I think that's a better thing to do than to try to go into a culture that certainly I don't understand and to try to dictate to them what they might do and how they might make changes. I know if an organization came to me as a boat pilot here on my lake and told me how I was gonna run things and the decisions I needed to make as far as safety or pulling swimmers, I'm gonna tell them to go fly a kite that I know my lake better than they do and who are they to, to dictate things. And along that line, I would also say if we did intervene in some way, I think there would be an inherent liability that if all of a sudden an organization made changes based on recommendations that we re requested or advice that we gave them and how they should change, if they had an incident shortly thereafter, I think they'd come directly back at this body and say, hey, look, we did what you wanted us to do and something tragic happened. And so the, you know, the American in me says the liability that we would take on by dictating to some other culture and some other organization and some other company, I wouldn't want to take that on myself. Sorry, just, just to I... jump in there on on the li liability, Mark, just to uh, just out of clarity, you know, we we mm -hmm. ho hopefully made it clear to everyone here that there is uh, there's this is an advisory board context. There's there's no mm -hmm. um, there's there's no liability or risk to you as individuals. Hi, everybody. When after. A... Uh, listen to you, I think the only thing that we could do is just to um, propose uh, a governing uh, body is built in Japan that it's independent from Ocean Navy. That's the only thing I, I think we can do if WOSA will be neutral in all this uh, talking, you know, in, in Japan, just propose a governing body with clear rules uh, is built in Japan with local people. Kevin, do you want to go? Okay, let's go on to Barbara from, from Japan, right, Barbara? Uh, yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah, um, I'm here in Japan. Uh, on front of me is the Tsugaru Strait. It's so sad. Um, uh, the the actual the point is um Sur Strait now with these rules is almost impossible uh, really if you don't have the same current and the same wind uh, from the the success um, event before you you can swim yeah that that is the point and also this is very difficult to explain to the rest of the world even the other swimmers. Um, but I don't know what is what possibilities we have with the Ocean Navy. Perhaps if the other uh, association with uh, the Mr. Ishii. Ishii or could be reactivate, uh, it could be a possibility, a real possibility. Otherwise, I, I swear that the Ocean Navy don't have the um, a, a good or a firm relationship with the captains. We can see we can saw that with my team um uh, other or the decision of swimming maybe we can change that but but the captains is very uh, difficult for talk uh, is mandatory have a translator i think really from from the organization or from us from the swimmers is very necessary because the captains don't don't want to talk with you in in any moment, um, and they make the decisions, and that part is very difficult. And the best example was my my case because Andy actually could swim, and and he's a very tough and good swimmer, but also me. <laughs> Sorry, but and and I just saw the, the the straight in front of me and the water and was okay. And now about the the refounded policy that is also very confusing. Yeah, we don't have any answer uh, from the ocean navy yet. 
And I, I, I don't know, we, we love the Ocean 7 challenge for us in South America is um, the very important thing because for us in South America, even the, the money is different. Yeah, uh, for us, it's the very expensive and difficult swims more than the, the training or the, the swim is the, the expensive and stay here and we don't and we can talk with anybody about this. Um, even for Nora or Mariel was different because they go with the Mr. Mr. E.T. and the other captain is um, retired too. So that is my point. Maybe with the Mr. E.T. we have an um, uh, opportunity, but with Ocean Navy, I don't know because it's so difficult to talk with him and we can see the captains is one group and the association is the another group. Uh, yesterday came uh, the observer for talk with us and say nothing. It's sorry, sorry, it's the only, only thing he said for us. Um, that's it. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this. Kevin? Um, I'm not sure whether you're calling on me or not. Um, I'm having huge difficulty um, because it's the the speech is very intermittent. Um, um, I don't know whether you're hearing me now or. or hey, or Kevin, not. let's let's come back um, to you. It, my it is a little spotty. It. Let's come. Let's come back, Kevin. It's a it's a little spotty. We'll see if it improves. Um, let's let's continue uh, down the list. Uh, let's jump to Dan. Thanks, Quinn. Um, my statement's simple. I, I really appreciate uh, this forum and that we're you know coming together as a community to um, try to educate and and share our um, experiences with the, the rest of the world. Um, and I think that's really all we can do. I don't believe we have any. I think the market has to take care of the business issue side of things. Um, but I really uh, am eager to be a part of this uh, process of just getting the word out and uh, and certainly share all the um, observations and, and what's been spoken. Great. Thanks, Dan. Um, we're going to skip Kathy, too, because I think they're together. Uh, Steve, Steve Sutton. Hello, is that is that for Kathy? Yeah, Kathy, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, apologies, there's no photograph, but I'm not very well, and uh, I'd rather you didn't see me like this. Um, first of all, um, I think this is excellent what you've put together, Quinn, and it does need addressing. Um, I was thinking about supports and advice and maybe design a template for setting up a governing body using other governing bodies, for example, CS and PF, Catalina, CSA, and um, once a template has been put together and the Japanese sort of follow it, that it gets endorsed by Wowser. So we do the bulk of the work, but they adopt a template. Um, on another note, I do have concerns within the Ocean 7. I think um, the English Channel, Manhattan, Catalina and the North Channel all tick the boxes. However, I do have concerns about the Cook Straits, Gibraltar and Molokai because emails go unanswered. Um, it appears that unless you're fast, they're not interested in taking you. And um, there's definitely a monopoly on those three swims on which swimmers get to go. Thanks, Kathy. Just very quickly, let me try to, uh, you know, briefly limit the scope of this to to Cigaru. I mean, inevitably, it brings up lots of issues. In, um, uh, but, but I think, you know, if we're if we're able to figure out what what or if we can address some issues in Cigaru, uh, hopefully that can also be a model to to help improve the sport properly. Thank you. Um, Steve, Steve, are you with us? Uh, Shelly, go ahead. 
Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm in, uh, I'm in California. Um, just, I just want to give brief background, very, very brief, uh, Quinn, if you'd allow me that leverage. Um, for those that don't know, I coach Andy Donaldson, um, and I've mentored him since the beginning of his Ocean, Ocean Sevens journey. So um, I'm very privy to a lot of information with regard to Japan. And um, the, I want to just state clearly that his swim um, was set up with the aid of many, many um, Ocean Seven swimmers, successful and unsuccessful to date. So enabling, uh, in, in, to, in order for him to be successful, we created a support network that, um, that we, it wasn't like, and I just want to make sure that you understand, there was no um, favours given to him. So uh, Barbara, um, as a former swimmer myself, I understand your pain, I feel your pain, and hence why I'm very um, much um, invested in supporting swimmers and supporting Wowza and supporting um, any organisation. As a result, I, 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 I don't know if it's been stated, but Navi, Ocean Navi is a very, um, is a very big organisation. It is affiliated with FINA and the World Aqualics, Aquatics. So it's in my eyes, in my view, from my time serving, as the Honorary Secretary for Global Swimming and the requirements um, required by FINA, there are a lot of rules and regulations. So, um, and having worked in Japan, having uh, you know rolled out world championships there, there are a lot of rules and regulations. Now, Japan is a very rules and regulated society. So, um, like like many others, that they, they don't you know they don't excuse the pun, they don't cross that black line. You know, they stay in their lane for various reasons. So um, hearing that hearing that Barbara wasn't able to start and that Andy was, I think there's a lot more to play than just rules and, and, and it's unwritten rules. And a lot of swimmers will understand there's unwritten rules and they might not be fair. Um, so I understand that Barbara's a strong swimmer and Jer Kennedy's on this course, so he can back up that there was a lot of analytical study done before the swim started, it wasn't saying, hey, let's see how it goes. Let's see how he laughs. Let's see how mother nature treats him. They said, if we're gonna go, the goal is with the intention to get through all the different parts of that swim, which involve currents, winds. There's a lot in that picture as all of you people on this call understand <laughs> in open water swimming. The main factor that Jair can back up on there is his speed. His ability is, is fast. And that's not because that's not fairness. That's just because this is the this this is the conditions that he was in his window that enabled him to start his speed and his ability to change speed. So that had been determined from all his past wins and also all the data that had been provided by his swim coach and everything to back up that they could then plot the course accordingly. So I just want to give that a clear understanding. I am very on board an investigation into, into where we're at in this platform. I believe this is a very positive start because this will help every organization. That's your, that's your hook, Shelley. My hook is, right, is that, my hook is, is that, and it's not so much a hook. I just want to state that I believe that there's been, a, that, that I think the politics and the <laughs> translation of language is very, very important. And, you know, as Sarah has said, as Barbara's just said, they're not saying much. And I don't know if Sugara or Gibraltar or other swims that people uh, have problems with, is there a breakdown in, in translation one? But in the, in the breakdown of translation, that's why I think what uh, Kathy was saying, having those templates there, that enables everybody to be on a fair playing field. The right. other thing Thanks. is, and, the, and finally, Shelly, number... Shelly, time's up. We can get to it in, in discussion. Okay, okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do want to clarify two things. Andy's swim was not done with, with Ocean Navity. And secondly, uh, yes. our research uncovered that um, Ocean Navity has any affiliation with FINA. But we can get to it in discussion. If you have evidence to the contrary, we'd love to see it. So let's let's move on. Um, uh, let's go to Jamie, Jamie Lomelin. Jaime, 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 Queen. Uh, hi, Queen, and hi, everyone. Um, I, I mean, I do, I do agree with most of the comments that have been done in terms that it's an educational uh, issue. 
uh, I guess implementing a forum of what experiences other swimmers have had will be very, very valuable to future swimmers. However, I, I, I do also agree um, and understand that this, I mean, uh, this is a, a cultural thing, the, the Japan swim, and that each of the seven uh, swims uh, have their own different rules and, and, and govern your bodies. But if we try to suggest, I mean, we're a multicultural group, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure we can uh, uh, kind of get it into the Japanese cultural, uh, you know, uh, in trying to suggest best practices and, 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 and protocols, uh, at least making very clear and transparent all the uh, disclaimers and warrants that they have uh, in terms of, you know, if you swim more than, you cannot swim more than X hours and the swim cannot take place at X and Y, Z. I mean, all of that should be uh, in the eyes of the swimmer. I mean, whatever the swimmer's name is, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, as the swimmer, the least we can expect. So uh, what I'm suggesting is in a very subtle way, uh, try to suggest, not force, because I mean, they own the swim, but, but, but at least uh, try it. I mean, uh, I guess as a governing body, if we don't do it, we'll fall short uh, in the work we're doing. That would be it. Shannon, why don't you go ahead? Uh, hello, I think uh, just to echo some of the, what's already been said, um, I think that it, we have, this is a unfortunate for a lot of people, but it's a great opportunity for us going forward to for advocating on behalf of swimmers, whether I think there, you know, there would be, if we're able to give some kind of like, I think someone else said it, like a stamp of approval that, uh, you know, this organization is recognized to <laughs> support, you know, swimmers or has, has an outstanding, you know, track record. And we are just guiding swimmers, I guess, as a way just to advocate on behalf of swimmers. I think that uh, might be, that's I guess the thing I can think of just as a forward looking. Great, Julie Ridge. This has sort of been said, but the first thing I wrote down when you sent this was um, Japan is an ally and in the spirit of solidarity and diplomacy, I think as a body that's trying to equalize and regulate and just kind of make things together internationally, they need to be invited to join us and to work with us and to be members of the Rules and Regulation Committee. So that, I don't know, um, I don't speak Japanese, I don't know the culture either. Shelley probably would be a great emissary here, but there, I don't know if there has been a concerted effort to join with them. And I should think that would go successfully because they have a lot invested and they have a lot to win. The Ocean Seven, at number two, the Ocean Seven was kind of an arbitrary made up thing. And it's wonderful. Um, but if, it becomes something that that particular swim is so far outside our scope of regulated swims. You can preserve Ocean 7, the people who have done it with a special double asterisk, but it's a big wide world. And all the people here have done amazing swims that are not on the Ocean 7. And I can imagine if we really did some research, there could be a very viable substitute for that particular swim if we can't you know equalize things that's it okay there we go okay well thank you quinn for hosting us today and and this really did warrant this meeting um i think we need to go back to the very beginning and understand that right now we don't have a governing organization for this swim. I think we're beginning to see the importance of these local governing organizations and that small core group of people who help set the terms, who work with the pilots, who take feedback from swimmers. So I think we, we need to go back, um, have a very honest talk with Japanese Coast Guard regarding 
Do you have limits on when swimmers can swim? What is the business about? Is this an arbitrary pilot decision as to 10 hours or 14 hours and then the swimmer is pulled? The landing spot has been a source of contention as well. So I think we need definitive terms as to whether this is coming from pilots or coming from the Japanese Coast Guard. Um, we, once that is done, we need to see, because we've been using the plural of they and Japanese, that sort of thing, but we don't have a specific individual or a small group of individuals who might be willing to take this on. And until we have a local source, we can't manage this swim from halfway around the world with vast language and cultural differences. So we need that local organization. That's where Japanese marathon swimming is going to have to step up. And do they want to save their portion of the Ocean Seven? Um, we, I know you don't want to mix swims, not at all, but we nearly you know, had a, a situation when Gibraltar, when um, Raphael died, we lost him. Yes, his daughter stepped up and there have been certainly bumps in the road, but potentially if we can get the Japanese swim Suguru figured out, then perhaps we can help some of these other swims. I know I was about to start inquiries for this particular swim. And right now it is, let the buyer beware, I would not be comfortable contacting them or moving forward in any shape with the swim. But let's start at the beginning. Let's get answers from the locals regarding their swim and see if anyone from Japan is willing to step up and take this on. And we as an organization, WOWS, that can provide tremendous support. I'd like to see this remain in the Ocean 7, but um, as the United States Marine Corps says, adapt and overcome. You know, sometimes it's simply not possible, but uh, let's give it a good go. Thank you. Great. Uh, um... Why don't we jump to uh, Garrett, Garrett Kenny? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, you hear me okay, Quinn? Sorry, I'm just driving at the minute. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, based on the tidal models of the actual swim, which I've studied for the, intensively for the past three weeks, um, th there's some things that will have to change to make the swim completely fair to other swimmers, is the start time will have to be at least midnight. Uh, for one, the uh, if not, uh, you would have to be a, a, at least a 4K an hour swimmer to, to at least make an attempt to get across. And that's if you're lucky, to be honest with you. So it's going to be pulling in here. With the current model, basically, if, if they don't change it to midnight, it's it's 90 percent. Um, it'll be 90 percent failure, in my opinion, and I can prove that. Uh, with with various title models that we've actually done, and it's uh, we worked to, we worked across to get Andy across, and and that was extremely difficult. And you know the first three hours, four hours intensive, and then it got worse. Uh, and I, I think only for his, his speed and fitness, uh, which is exceptional at the top level of our, our marathon swimming, I think only that he has that he was able to persevere. And there's very few people, in my opinion, uh, w would be at that level so it's unfair to other swimmers that they think they can go over there and start at 4 a.m and think they have a chance they have they have no chance i can assure you they have no chance so unless that changes i i think it's not it's i think everyone's wasting their time and going there opinion my, that's my opinion on it so and i can prove that model t is obviously we can do that at a later time but unless the coast guard changes that rule um I think really, I obviously want to see it remaining in the, in the in the Ocean Seven, of course, but unless that rule is changed, I, I think it's 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 very difficult for service. Great, uh, Paul George is here. Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, I can speak because uh, I've been there and uh, I had a uh, an attempt with Subaru. Uh, what I saw in social media after uh, after our uh, swims that uh, all all those un unhappy swims uh, somebody took advantage to I don't know to continue the war with somebody and uh, I didn't like it and I stepped a little bit back. This is my opinion and uh, I. I want to swim to Garu because it's a nice place. It's a nice 
uh, it's a nice uh, straight and I like people from Japan. I love Japan people, but uh, as Gerald said, uh, it's very difficult if we don't start at midnight. At least this rule has to be changed. It's it's impossible because I I met I had to challenge uh, currents of seven k per hour, and then they told me that if even if I uh, pass the seven k per hour. It, it will be another with 13k per hour so <laughs> it was hopeless for it. great thanks so, thanks so much paul just to clarify uh, a couple things from the earlier comments and paul's comment um the the coast guard gives one off permission for each swim um and they do not allow for swimming at night so you know we, there are some constraints and there are still some unanswered questions about, you know, the, the reasons behind that, um, which we can dive into. Let's move to, uh, do we have Phyllis or Jumti on? No. Uh, let's, let's, let's jump to Nuala. Nuala. So, hi, I was late. I missed the very beginning. So I, um, I'll just cover a few things that, first of all, it's amazing to hear the um, <clears throat> the information from the swimmers who've actually been there. From a swimming point of view, um, it's very clear that the speed, the currents, the challenge of actually having the Suguru as part of the Ocean Sevens is valuable because it takes a completely different type of skill sets to get across the channel. And that in itself, I suppose, is one of the reasons that makes it different from other channels. So for me personally, what I would love to see is maybe the Suguru broken down into what the challenges are. I was, I suppose I'm not as familiar with all the different routes and why those routes are not available. So I think that would be something to look at. Um, from a piloting point of view, I suppose it's really important that we look at the fact that the contract between the pilot and the swimmer is completely different from the, I suppose, the association with Ocean Navi. Well, it should be to some point unless they're connected because I missed the beginning. Um, as regards the governing body and the ratification of the swims, I mean, somebody's obviously ratifying the swim, somebody's obviously appointing an observer, and the observer is obviously connected to the swim on that level. Like there are areas from a, a swimming community that we need to do to protect the integrity of the swim. Because for me, I mean, there's so much information out there, but all of the swims, we need to protect the history, the integrity of the swim, the challenge of the swim, but then we also have to look at how the swim works from the swimming community. So for me, the areas that I would love to look at are the areas of what are the challenges for any swimmer in doing the swim, applying for the swim, undertaking the swim, what would be the challenges in dealing with a pilot, um, what are the questions that the swimmer needs to look at as regards, as Barbara spoke about, you know, cancellation policies, um, Sarah also had that issue with the piloting, like all of that needs to be transparent. Um, for the future of the Suguru, what's interesting is up until 2012, I think in those 22 years, there was only six or seven swimmers. And from 2012 until now, the rest of the swimmers majority have been Ocean 7 swimmers. So those pilots are really not full-time pilots. They are also fishing vessels, I presume, or whatever else. That None of them are actually ever going to break a rule that's put forward by a Coast Guard. And if a Coast Guard gives a directive to any fishing vessel, they will always carry that through. So whether we decide the swim has to start at midnight, and you have a directive that the rescue capability is not going to be there. I think we have to be very careful with that because if the Irish Coast Guard give a directive that something doesn't happen, boats and marine vessels won't go against any Coast Guard recommendations. So there's a lot of stuff there that we have to be very mindful of. So as a community, I think using the information from the swimmers is magnificent. I mean, I've learned an awful lot tonight as regards what the swimmer um is doing and what the swimmer is experiencing. Sorry. 
I do feel that at the end of the day, it's about informing the swimmer as regards what's happening out there and how we can affect change on that. But interfering in it, I probably would not as much be in favor of that, if that works. Thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to clarify one point uh, to Paul. Um, I just was reminded that um, uh, Sarah Thomas in, in her uh, excellent write-up about her experience uh, um, mentioned that she also had reached out to Stephen and gotten some good advice um, early on, but, but as, as things proved difficult, Stephen kind of kind of backed away and wasn't available to help sort things out. Uh, we don't we don't know why. Um, you know, it's possible Ocean Navi did reveal that Stephen was receiving an honorarium at some point um, for his advice and consultation to that organization. I'm not speculating at this time um, what his relationship is. Um, only that uh, he is he is not stepping forward and and uh, being forthcoming or helpful at this moment. Um, all right, moving moving down the list, uh, Kate Steeles. Hi, thank you um, very much for giving us this opportunity to get involved. Um, I think we should try and engage with those in Japan, and I agree a lot with what Julie Ridge said. I think it's really important to take note of the culture of, Jap of the Japanese people, and that's about normally trying to help each other. And I think perhaps one of the first port of calls is to try and negotiate with the Coast Guard, because to me, that seems We've already heard a lot of people saying how rule bound the Japanese are. So this midnight cutoff is critical for most swimmers, with Andy being the exception. He's so fast and he's just a phenomenal swimmer, but way beyond the leagues of most people. And I think that you can't underestimate the importance of the cultural approach. If we just go in there and try and demand things or get tick boxes, I can't see it working. And I hear what you say about Stephen, but I do think that Stephen should be involved in trying to help. And I think he's got some key skill sets that would be useful and maybe through Shelley or others to try and help work behind the scenes to see if he can help us. I also think in regards to your second point about Ocean 7, we haven't heard a lot tonight about it. It's about the actual affordability that Ocean 7 is having and particularly to Sigaru and the cost that swimmers are having to pay. And I think that everyone who's done it is right up out there and absolutely, you know, triple star, gold star. But I think the time has come to evolve. I think that there's a monopoly um, by pilots that can hold you to ransom like we're talking about tonight. But there's also other areas that haven't had good experiences, Molokai, Gibraltar. And I think that perhaps the time has come to look at having maybe 10 or 12 swims on the table and Ocean 7 swimmers to be able to pick seven of them. I know nobody else has said that so far tonight, and I'm putting myself out on a limb there. But um, that's my honest thoughts. Thank you. OK, I'll, let me just take a moment to, to clarify um in in 2012 ishii wrote a blog post that's in a report you can read about um criticizing the other organization for swimming at night so we we do believe or know that there's a long-standing tradition of not swimming at night while there are exceptions we believe those are exceptions that were against the rule it was actually forbidden um we may get more clarity, but as of now, it really looks like this was um, uh, a policy and only six people have actually swum at night. So something to un uncover. All right, moving on, um, uh, Bill McCracken. Sure, Quinn. Hey, Quinn, I'm going at it now. I'm going to have to come back when I get to a better seat. All right. So, so real, real quickly, I think um, from what I've uh, been seeing and observing, the first and most important thing we could do is identify some local Japanese open water representatives to help us understand, uh, really continue the, the work here to understand what the rules are, 
what the Coast Guard organization is to get involved um, and you know continue to try to help build a framework for being able to be successful with swims in uh, that strait. I spent about two or three years, actually three or four years, dealing with Japanese businesses um, in country there, um, was able to build very good, strong relationships with them. And I believe that it's uh, not difficult to do to find people that are part of the open water community in Japan. Obviously, they're having world championships there. Certainly, we can find some people to help us engage in this next steps of the investigation and recommendations on how to move forward. I'll just stop there because everybody else has pretty much made good recommendations on other things to do, but that would be your uh, number one priority is to get some good people that really do understand the local rules, regulations, governing bodies, et cetera, to move forward. Great, thank you. Uh, Susan Simmons? Thanks, Quinn. Um, first, I want to say I really appreciate all of the transparency around this swim. I don't think I've ever seen that much transparency before, and it's of huge value to somebody like me. I hope that we can take this and create a formal template that we can use for all of the other swims as well. I feel that would add a lot of value to for everyone who wants to do the swims. Um, when I looked at this, I'm trying to approach it from a place of curiosity, and my first question is, how much does what Wales what, want to invest in this from a time perspective? It seems that there is a very limited number of people that can do this swim for a number of reasons. One of them cost. Uh, I costed out as a Canadian the Ocean Seven, and it was seven hundred uh, seventy-five thousand dollars for me just for the swims, hotel, and flight. So that's a lot of money that most people won't ever be able to achieve and now adding on the 4k an hour uh, which is going to exclude uh, a number of people from doing the swim so it's a very exclusive group and thank you kate for your suggestion i love it i think uh, this is a great opportunity to look at all of the other places around the world we can do, be, be doing swims uh, i just a word of caution around the interactions with the japanese uh, my my sense right now is that they're feeling a little bit disrespected by some of the comments that they've seen online and they're a culture of people who really ap appreciate being honored um, so it would be to me i think it's better to work directly with the groups before we go to the coast guard because it's also it's kind of like we're going behind them in order to get some answers um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is that if we're going to review one swim, I think it's important that we review all of them. This isn't the only swim that there have been complaints about. There have been complaints about bottlenecks. Other people have complained about deposits, about not being able to go out on swims because the pilots wanted to get the next group in or their swims were cut short. Um, it, it seems only fair that if we look at one, we look at all of them. So thank you. Thanks, Susan. Uh, Christine Coppola. Sure, I'll be very quick. I know we're at time. Um, just want to appreciate this forum. I appreciate you know us being able to bring opinions here. I want to be respectful um, about bringing my own because I've never done an Ocean Seven swim before. Um, I was really impressed by the investigation. I thought it was extremely expeditious. There's lots of information in there. I agree with you know Joe, Erica, Dan, Kathleen, and so many of the other comments so far. I think a brief summary of the facts and things to be mindful of so that swimmers have this swim that it's upcoming can go in eyes wide open. Um, you know, is there a way to collaborate as a few people have mentioned, share the modeling that was mentioned on how it'd be so difficult to finish if you can't start at night and collaborate on problem solving and bringing in the parties um, to help help do that together. And then longer term, I do love the template that's been mentioned um, and just now um, and best, best practices and agree that possibly looking at all of them would be a good a good thing to do as well. That's great. Um, Steve Sutton, are you ready? Um, like other people mentioned, I agree with a lot of the previous speakers. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Some of it's contradictory. I honestly find it hard to have an opinion on a whole lot. The swim. I, the Coast Guard rules, I don't understand. If it is true that 
it's illegal to start before 3 a.m. and boat captains will be arrested or lose their license. That's not good. And then the other question is, should the swim be in the Ocean 7, I suppose? I, I don't know. If it's something that only a few people can make, maybe that, you know, I think the best idea I've heard so far is have 10 swims or additional swims and have the swim be able to be rotated in or out. But I don't have a lot of experience with the channel, and I certainly have no experience with the Japanese Coast Guard and the rules of law. So I, I think, um, I apologize, I forget the woman's name from, I believe, Ireland. Uh, you had very good comments. I agree with a lot of what you said. I, I like what you said. So I wish I could contribute more, but I really don't have enough experience in the area. Yeah. Great, great, Steve. And and just to just to clarify, because I'm I'm getting a couple of questions about the the Coast Guard. You know, it, it, from our research, it was never legal to swim at night. So I I just want to make that make that clear. Um, Personally, and, that makes, that makes it rather intriguing to me, but I don't think it's something that we can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, there there may there there may have been cases of special permission. Um, so you know. We we will we 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 may learn more, but I think it's important to state that it was it was never legal to swim at night, and um, you know the one the ones that did got special permission, presumably. Um, okay, I think the the only only person that hasn't gone, unless I'm wrong, is Kevin Murphy. Has anyone has anyone not made their statement? Okay. I think we're good. I, I think uh, we can segue into a broader discussion. I know we're we're two minutes over an hour. Um, um, I'm I'm going to be available to continue to discuss. Um, but if people need to drop off, you know, feel feel free to do so. Um, and thank you, everyone, for for the statements. I think we uh, we have a lot of different perspectives, um, and you know, I think I think it's important that. We maintain the scope of this conversation while we can um, while we can learn a lot from it, and there may be parallels from other organizations, other associations with you know similar challenges. We we can apply those and discuss those, um, but you know we have a crisis in Subaru, and I want to make sure we address that first. So those are those are my thoughts, um, and we are we are still awaiting more information from Ocean Navi. We would like to see what the Coast Guard uh, has issued precisely. Uh, so this is an ongoing investigation, but um, I really appreciate everyone kind of getting, giving their thoughts and, and hopefully we can elevate the level of dialogue from you know the chatter I've seen on social media so far. Um, Pat, are you, able, are you able to speak? I, we, I would love to get your thoughts as well. Are you having trouble with your microphone? All right, I just want to I want to add before we you know have kind of an open discussion here, which which may get unruly and we we may have to cut short anyway. But um, uh, we we are in constant communication with Ocean Navi, so that's that is the good news. They are they are communicating with us. They may not be you know completely transparent and forthcoming, but we're in active dialogue, and that's a great that's a great first step. So. All right, open op open floor at least until uh, Pat Pat or Kevin um, are able to provide their statements. Uh, I'll go first, if I may, Quinn. Go ahead, Shelley. Okay, so I would like to. Um, I I am really excited about where we are. So I want because I at the moment I don't see if we have an overall governing body for the, our sport. We do for the professional sense in in the racing sense at the Olympic level. But I'm really excited with Wales wanting to govern or lead the lead a govern. Hey, Shelley, I'm just, I'm just going to interrupt you. I, I I just want to say this this is not our attempt to um, govern or re regulate the Ocean Seven. This is this is us trying to solve an immediate problem in Sugaru. If there are lessons from Sugaru that we can help provide guidance, best practices. Uh, but we we are not trying to become a regulatory body in the Ocean Seven at this time. I I I I understand that and I appreciate that. But if if 
why would they then listen to us? Because we, we, we have an advisory board of 53 okay. people all okay. with a tremendous wealth of experience and uh, influence and representing different parts of the world, different aspects of the sport, uh, coming at and trying to approach a problem with a swimmer centric solution and uh, in, a, in a thoughtful manner. So I, 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 think, I think there is precedent. I also think this is a forum to galvanize um, the broader community, so we can have an even larger voice. This isn't just about Wowsy's voice. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying. I was just trying to to gather um, some ideas of if, if if one association is going to follow Wows, or you know, how we're we representing that. If we're just so we're just a swimmers forum that we are based on what you're saying, a community that is giving them ideas. Is that is that is that why they're going to follow follow our instructions or our our, our knowledge? Um, our, our instructions and not, I mean, I think, I think if, if we do this correctly, we, we will, we will speak with one voice as a broader open water swimming community. I think there has not been a platform with that historically. And I think, sorry, I think if we're able, if, if we're able to do this thoughtfully, Paul, please stay muted. Um, if we're if we're able we're able to do this in a in a thoughtful and transparent manner, I think we are going to bring the community around and, and bring out lots of opinions, and that does hold weight. That does have power. And whether the outcome is, uh, an, it doesn't always need to be top down, Shelley. I guess that's my point. There's no there's no governing body in the sport. We're not trying to be that. We we are trying to facilitate a transparent discussion. They are communicating with us, and that's a first step. So, you know, I think I think that's important to clarify. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. It's just that when you're dealing with a country like Japan, which does go top down, and does take direction from organisations, hence my hence my initial question. My other question is when we're discussing the future, and a lot of other people have talked about it, and I wanted to share it because I've had it in discussions with you, Quinn. Is that if if one of the Ocean Seven, for example, was in Russia right now, what would we do? Because it's completely obvious to the, you know that we would not be able to go to Russia and complete an Ocean Seven. So my proposal, which I'm open to discussion, because I haven't stated it in front of all of you today, is that we would have the seven. If, if that happens, like what's happening in Sagar, then you give them an option, and then we may give them some options of an option. So you might suggest okay, you, here's five swims in, in the continents and choose one of those five, then four, it's going to be economically more feasible to any swimmer because it's closer to them. Um, and, you know, an option to complete it. Therefore, that in the case where Sagara has that asterisk next to, it, next to it because of what's happening right now, while we're investigating, we don't want to limit people not achieving their Ocean 7. So that's my, um, that's my consideration I'd like to put forward on the table if that for discussion. Can I maybe come back in here, Quinn? Yeah, Ed, but before we do that, Mark, Pat, Pat, are you are you able to say something? I, I am trying to. No, you're good. We can hear you now. Please, please you go, can, ahead. go okay. ahead with your statement. You you solved it. Go for it. Okay, I had to go on my iPhone for some reason. My computer wouldn't work. I agree with many of the uh, recommendations that we have to be very respectful of the Japanese culture because they are a society of rules and regulations, especially surrounding their fishing community. Um, uh, one thing that I would highly recommend to, to get in touch with the Japanese open water association to see if they can work with them in addition to Wowza working with them. And also uh, Kate Steele's recommendation. I had that on my list before she ever said it. I think there should be 10 swims and let the swimmer decide which of the seven they want to do to complete it. And it would really bring um, an awareness to other great uh, locations to swim. You could pick two in the northern hemisphere and two in the southern hemisphere, and let the swimmer decide if they if they want to try Suguru. Fantastic! But I'll tell you, with global warming, 
those currents, the winds are getting worse. And you would have to be an extremely fast swimmer to be successful. And I think the majority of the Ocean 7 swimmers are just uh, the everyday swimmers that are out there to have a great time. And Suguru would not be a successful swim. My swim took me 19 hours. Uh, so if I had to swim this year, I never would have made it. I would be far off. So, but thank you, Quinn, for uh, yeah. hosting yeah, me. Pat, Pat just, j just to clarify, there, there isn't a Japanese open water association. They are solely focused on races so far to date. So, you know, oh, okay. they, they have embraced the marathon swimming community, but, you know, sure, that it's still still a possibility if they have okay. infrastructure and enough people with interest. Yeah. So yeah. Good, good uh, thank suggestion. you, Quinn. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Kevin, you want to give it a you want to give it a go, or is the connection too unstable? Uh, well, I'll try. I'm in Loch Ness at the moment in an Airbnb, um, which is why the internet connection is appalling. Um, but I, hopefully, you can hear me. Um, I, I I would agree that we need to make contact with uh, an organisation in Japan, which is connected with swimming. There must, there must be an organization, for instance, that, uh, that chooses whoever does the Olympic 5K or 10K or whatever it is. There must yeah, be there an organization. Yeah, the, there is a Japanese Swimming Federation. There is a Japanese Swimming Federation. That does open water as well. But again, it's all racing, not marathon swimming. Well, um, sh surely they could help us. They could advise us. The other thing that I, I think we, we've we been talking in a bit of a vacuum in as much as we're not hearing from, uh, what is it, Ocean Navi or whatever it is, or we're not hearing from Ishii. Um, Ishii, uh, I have great respect for, and uh, I would um, uh, welcome his input into this. Uh, the the other thing that uh, I, I, as others have expressed, I, I have severe doubts about some of the others in the Ocean Seven, um, and uh, the difficulty of actually getting any response from uh, organisers. I, I I do uh, I've heard what has been said about uh, alternative swims, and I think that uh, might actually be a way to go. Um, you know, the, the, why are we in Japan? Why there is an organisation that could help us in Australia? So why, why, you know, why are we battering away at a, a swim that, that where it's it's almost impossible to get the 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 backing for it? Yeah, just to clarify, Kevin, we are in touch with Ocean Navi. They they are cooperating, if not in you know being totally forthcoming. They're providing. Uh, answers to the questions we're offering. We're also in touch with Ishii, um, and you know we hope to learn more about who could uh, potentially be emissaries on the ground for us in Japan. So that that is being. I, I would have welcomed them in this forum to 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 hear from them. That's a great idea. Anyone else want to want to chime in on any of the po points so far? Um, this is Erica. I think. Um... One of the most interesting points, and I think worth more conversation, is the, the research that Gare did on the currents and the timing. I just found that really, really interesting, and trying to understand that further, I think, is really important because if if what he's saying is correct, that it, you know you have to be able to swim, you know, four k per hour, two point five miles per hour, it's really you're, you're basically saying, "Am I? Are you hearing me?" Okay. Um, and so I think really just understanding, is that in fact the case that you have to leave at midnight to re realistically complete the swim? And that takes me to, you know, it's only elite of the elite swimmers. And then that takes me down the idea of, yeah, maybe we need to have 10 to 12 options for Ocean 7 around the world that allow all calibers of swimmers, the ability to become an Ocean 7 swimmer. And really understand the Coast Guard element of no swimming at night. I think that's, that's to me, that's the, the real pinch point here. Yeah, yeah, so, but Erica, you know, 30 plus swimmers left after 3 a.m. and su successfully crossed the Sugar Strait. So 
that's that's worth noting. Um, and only six were able to swim at night, and that's been um, you know consistent with these six exceptions. So just for just for frame of reference. Uh, Kate, go for it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Quinn. Um, just a quick question. I know we're coming to the end. I just and I know you're having a meeting next week, which is brilliant for those who couldn't make it tonight. But just um, asking, really, what the next process is. What are you going to do with this? Are you going to have an action plan? What's the next steps? Will you share it with us? And do we have a chance to comment? Or just want to know a little bit more, really. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said at the outset, um, you know, this is a uh, not a quick, easy, fast solution, right? I, I do think a lot of the uh, discussion on social media has immediately jumped to replacing Sugaro or, or, you know, I've seen lots of calls for adding multiple, multiple events. Um, but we are talking with Ishii um, and we are talking, you know, we're learning, we're learning more every day. So I think, you know, a, a, an, an action plan at this stage is a little premature, um, but I, I would like to see this group kind of represent a more thoughtful version of the discussions happening online. Um, and uh, kind of galvanize a, a transparent discussion in the community. Um, you know, people are really concerned and this is the first step. So no, we don't have a 10, 10 point plan yet, Kate, but I think, uh, I, I think we, can, we can get there. If we're, if we're having the right conversation with the right people, uh, I think we can, we can move more quickly. Does that, does that address it? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And, and I'll, I'll also say that simply a byproduct of us engaging with them and knowing what, that we're having this discussion is already having an impact. I mean, I think they're, they're concerned. Um, and, you know, I think changes will result of this, even if we do nothing else. So I think we're moving in the right direction. If I could just come in there a second, I also think um, one of the areas that is very, very important here is that the swimmer becomes more aware of information because, you know, for a lot of us, we've been involved in channels before and we understand what goes on in the background or some do. But like at the other side of it, there is a great opportunity to share information as regards like the different mechanisms within a channel swim, because the normal swimmer or the regular swimmer may be very much lacking in information and the information that they may require to ask of pilots, because a piloting contract is a commercial contract between the swimmer and the pilot. And it's really important that they are more informed and their teams are more informed of the information that may be necessary for them to ask, rather than just um, kind of presume that the pilot is going to be in their best interest. The pilot is a commercial operator. Um, so like there's a lot of information there that can still be imparted and built together so that we can continue to inform the open water swimming community. But I do think as regards the, um, the Ocean Sevens, if I could just go back to 2011, at the time there was only 11 swimmers had ever uh, crossed the North Channel. And a lot of that at that time wasn't that the channel was incredibly, um, you know, it was, it was the accessibility to the channel, which is kind of replicated now in Suguru. But at the time we didn't have pilots who could hand over their season to carry swimmers. And now, um, as a result of the commercial product that has been built out of the North Channel, that has now become a commercial viability like the English Channel, where a Sugru, it appears, is not on that commercial footing. So it is an imbalance between the, the swimmer and, and the piloting. So there's a lot of areas there that can be looked at. But I do think as well, in the meantime, with all the investigations, I do think gathering information that can be imparted to a swimmer um, that just allows them to build their own. Uh, because as, as has been said, the Ocean Sevens is an elite product. And for a lot of swimmers, it'll never be on their bucket list. But I think it's a great opportunity to inform the rest of the people out there. Like if you do a channel, these are the different segments and, and how, because even ratifying a channel or, or presenting the, the information that the swimmer has, you know, the observer, all that stuff, um, it's, not a, it's not a simple process, but I think it's really an, a good opportunity to inform. 
if that makes sense. I, to I, to I totally agree though, thank you for that. And I, and I, and I do think one outcome of, of this uh, could be that you know, through one or more of our committees, um, we could uh, aggregate some good information and advice for swimmers specifically who uh, are, we can arm with, you know, it could be as simple as asking the right questions to the right people, um, understand what to look out for, what red flags there might be, what is the, you know, an appropriate range for everything from windows to pricing, et cetera. I, th I think there's a, there's a lack of centralized information out there, and I think we're uh, a good entity to be able to tackle that. So I think that's a great that's a great point. Um, I, I would also, I also want to say, you know, it, it's been interesting to me. This is our first attempt at um, tackling a high-profile issue that's on the tips of the tongues of marathon swimmers, and uh, uh, we're we're doing our best to to be extremely transparent. Um, and you know, we we have received some backlash for even looking into it, which. Uh, uh, I think is a sign we're, you know, shaking things up a little bit and, and trying to do this differently. It's so important. This does not happen behind closed doors. You know, there, there are, there's, po there's politics, there are agendas, there are, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, kind of bad, bad habits and cobwebs in our sport. And, and I think we just need to air it, uh, air it publicly with, with names to uh, opinions. And I think that's going to, going to help uh, shape the discussion in a positive way. Kevin, go ahead. Um, why was Sugaru chosen as one of the Ocean Seven? What what is what what why Sugaru? Why not something else? That's a great that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, it was it was coined by by Stephen Munitones um, uh, as a concept, um, but without you know without real infrastructure, it was a concept. It's a great concept. Um, I think you know ge geographic distribution. Um, was was a, a part of it. Also, Stephen has a connection in Japan. He lived he lived in Japan. He speaks Japanese. So, um, and uh, and I think sorry. And I think at the time, because I was involved in discussions at that time, because the North Channel was brought in because of the cold, and then the Suguru was brought in because of the speed and the currents. So they were looking at that time of developing channels with different areas, but also where each swimmer would have to have a very, very different skill set. So at the time, I remember the discussions being about spreading the skill sets rather than and just the geographical location. So, you know, because the North Channel at the time, I mean, we didn't, people swimming for more than six hours at 10 degrees, as you well know, Kevin was, was on, people weren't doing it. So it really was about developing the skill sets at that time because we were in New York at the time discussing it. So I think that was one of the reasons that the Suguru was was taken because of the speed and the currents. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Is there an alternative? Oh. There's bound to be at this stage, you know, at that stage there probably wasn't. But I mean, with what's known now, I mean, this is 12 years later, I would say without a doubt. There probably is. I mean, it's just matching. I mean, the whole concept of different channels, in my opinion, is trying to have a swimmer who has to work on different skill sets and then trying to exploit, you know, like you have to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. I mean, that makes the swimmer a really, you know, have an amazing skill set. But yeah, there's bound to be. I mean, I'm not on the I, circuit I... you guys are. So you you have a, a very good organization in South Africa in Cape Town and you have false Bay yeah so Kevin Kevin I think I think there are there are no shortages of options you know to to replace it if we're ready to have that conversation I think yes. so we worked we worked very hard to display the history in a couple articles of the origins, uh, which, which talked a lot about, uh, you know, from the, the article specifically from Ishii's perspective, I thought was particularly enlighten, enlightening. Um, but, you know, it was Stephen's brainchild. Stephen was familiar with it. He was one of the per first people to do the crossing. And I think that was, you know, a big part of it. Other comments? Please, no. <laughs> All 
All right, you hanging in there, Barbara? No, sorry. No, it's, uh, I think we sit here for one and a half an hour and I understand you. I, I think the, um, the most of the comments uh, there already has in the Sarah Thomas uh, text or in your own uh, searching. Yeah, uh, we are not looking for a new um, uh, Ocean 7, or maybe yes, but not in this meeting. I think in the next one, maybe uh, we can work in different streams or whatever. But for now, I think you are making the the right thing. Is The first of all is talk with the Ocean Navy, maybe with E.T., um, and Mr. E.T. from here, um, he 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 worked with he worked it with Andy. Um, that's it for me in this meeting. Is that that is the point, and we we uh, we must to be clear about the the different uh, informations about the Ocean Navy and the regulament um, things. For me, that is the point now. After one hour and and half, I, I think maybe in the other meeting we can work with points. And everyone has the, his opinion and, and talk and work or different in different group, maybe, um, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, listen, Barbara, because of, you know, we, we look forward to getting your full experience and report just like we have with everyone else. But mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just think this is out of control. You know, it, it, Ocean Navi is out of control. It's unmoderated mm -hmm. and... and you know, we're we're doing everything we can, even bringing it up. I think they're nervous. I think this will result in some change. Um, but mm -hmm. let's see if we can leverage it to to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, Super. That's my, my perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is great. Right. Thank you so much for the time and for the opportunity. I think. <laughs> I mean, we're, this is why we're doing it. So sorry, sorry for your trouble, but hopefully, good things come out of it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'm thinking the next swimmer. I, I don't know which one it will be. Yeah, uh, for the slots and everything. We haven't we haven't received a list. We don't we don't know. But um, uh, hopefully this won't continue. So hey guys, I think I think we're gonna wrap it there. Um, uh, this has been a productive ninety minutes. We got we got a lot of uh, really good perspectives, um, and some of them you know kind of really actionable. So hopefully we can kind of organize this in a in a thoughtful way, uh, put it out in a blog post, short video, um, and hopefully it, it elevates the level of discussion on this sensitive topic. Um, and um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for, for being leaders and your time. Um, and if you need to reach out to me for anything, don't don't hesitate. Um, I'm, I'm always an open door. Ben, can I say one comment, please? Yeah, please, Mark. Sorry, I interrupted you earlier. No, sure, sure, you're fine. Um, just as we're finishing, I would just sort of put a warning out of what would people actually type or write on social media. Um, I agree with what you say, Quinn. I know that you and I have talked about this as well. This is completely out of hand. It's completely out of order. And there has been some comments that if they were directed at me, I would probably be looking at legal guidance on them. So I think everybody by association, either with WISA, without WISA, everybody needs to sort of hang, step back a little bit and think, okay, let's not be a keyboard warrior over this. We all accept that there's an issue. Quinn is working very, very hard to try and find out the information and investigate this issue. Let's get all the facts, including what the Coast Guard actually has said, including many of the other comments what people have asked about here tonight. And then let's take this forward as a group, as a positive thing. Being a keyboard warrior does not help anybody. And if anything, it has stoked the fire and it has got a lot of people's backs up, I have to say. Uh, yeah. And that's not what we're about. It's not what voice is about. It's certainly not what I'm about anyway. And I don't think anybody else is really. But let's just be a wee bit more careful about what we're putting on social media if, if, if people don't mind me saying that. Yeah, no, so Mark, just to, just to add on to that, I. I I, I agree, but I, but I also think we want to we want to lead by by example. I mean, the issue is uh, you know when things when things turn personal, when it's about discussing a topic and helping swimmers, right? How do we how do we reframe and be leaders in the community in reframing the discussion uh, around something productive? And and that that is the goal here. 
um, and ignore and disengage from petty petty personal stuff. I think that's yeah, and I don't have an issue with it when it's about Sigari, but tonight has also talked about a lot of other of the Ocean Seven swims, which we weren't really here to talk about tonight. There has yeah. been comments that I read on social media, and I'm sure everybody else has as well, saying, in my experience about the swim here, in my experience about the swim there, we're not discussing those at the minute. Yeah. Let's stay yeah. focused on what we're actually discussing and what we're supposed to be dealing with, which is the here and now the reality is that it's Sigari at the minute. That's not to say it couldn't be somewhere else at some stage in the future, but let's deal with what we've got now, not with the water boundary or what if or when this or if this happens. Yeah, yeah. And one one last thing on that, you know, we, we we are doing factual research and we are presenting a wealth of information. Please read all of the information before you discuss a topic. Um, I think we have we have some bad habits in our sport online in how we engage with with facts and and research. And I know some people are allergic to reading, but um, you know it's it, it, it's it's important to understand all sides of an issue before before we dive in, and, and it, it will it will elevate the level of discussion. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really appreciate all of you, and um, I, I look forward to solving this with you. Uh, the next step, uh, we will have a second meeting for those who couldn't attend. Then we will produce a video um, and a blog post, and we will keep you posted on future interactions with Ocean Navi and Ishii and uh, continue our research. So thanks, everyone. We will be in touch. Talk to you soon.